Hi everyone, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra. I know I angered the gunner net, I didn't explain myself very well when we're talking about stock positions and where to shoulder your rifle. So today, I have brought a bevy of friends with me to the range, different size humans, we've got different size guns, we're going to put it with some objective data to the test and see what our recoil control does. Today's video is brought to you by the generosity of new bold targets. New bold targets are self-sealing reactive polymer targets that act like steel targets for training and practice but are safer than steel. They allow bullets to pass completely through the target without ricochet or lead splatter. Check out their links in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. So I want to introduce you to some friends. First of all, thanks to C2 Tactical here in Scottsdale for giving us some range space today. I have some amazing friends with me. My friend Nick showed up just to kind of help us and he gets to shoot and have a good time. The brains behind the outfit and our chief executive officer at Active Cell Protection, Stephanie Widener, also the uh, senior ASP certified instructor, ASP instructor numero uno, uh, our ASP numero dos, uh, our chief marketing officer, director of training, Neil. You see Neil on the Suck Less Saturdays all the First time. First place loser. Um, over here, Middle Spawn. So if you've been uh, personal friends with me, you've seen about Middle Spawn. This is my middle child, Aaron. And again, a very small human who is not a, uh, a longtime shooter, has done some hunting mm -hmm. and uh, shot when you I were little. shot in like three-ish years. Three-ish years, right? So that's a bit. My friend Zeb Nadler, who is a firearms instructor here in town and a rifle guy, like, you know, is about that rifle life. And so uh, I showed him some of this stuff off camera um, a couple nights ago. Blown away. And, and he was like, whoa. So uh, this is who we have doing this stuff today. Again, different size humans of different capability because I want to explain to you why we're doing what we're doing. So what I need to do first is I need to explain physics, right? So here's the big challenge is that folks were really kind of taking me to task because what I was saying is to bring the gun up to your face, okay? Uh, and not worry about stocking way up high on the heel of the stock, but rather just put the toe of the rifle, bring the gun up to you and go to work. And people were very frustrated with that. They said, John, all the best shooters in the world don't do it your way. And I get it. And, and a couple of arguments about that. Um, first of all, at one point, uh, you know, Jack Weaver and the Weaver stance was everything. And then, uh, and everybody was doing Weaver. And then Ray Chapman adapted it a little bit. And when they went to ISO, a lot of people were like, but no, everybody does Weaver until we figured out that a, an isosceles stance had real advantages, and now we do an athletic stance and those kinds of things. Okay, so eventually we change and we do things, all right? I'm not saying this is my revolution and I'm smarter than everybody. I'm giving you the physics of the rifle as well as the anatomy of the human. So let's talk about the physics of the rifle first, okay? So you set off an explosion here in the chamber. This rifle's clear right now. Uh, again, my Lone Star Armory TX-15. Fantastic rifle. So anyhow, uh, the, the explosion goes off here, sends a bullet down the barrel, pew, out that way. Okay, so then you get gas that comes through our, our low pro, pro gas block on this gun, whatever, comes back, impinges uh, over here, goes back down here, impinges on the bolt, bolt runs backwards. So that push is, is what I get, a push on the bolt. That bolt moves the buffer and the buffer spring. That buffer and buffer spring impacts the back here of the buffer. So the back of the buffer is about right here. So, so all that to say, the force that you feel pushing this rifle back, you feel right here. You feel along the line of the buffer and you feel that at the heel. So if we were just supporting this rifle without any other considerations, what we would really want to do is support it high and on the heel of the butt, of the buttstock. There's no question about that because then that would give us a linear push. If instead I only support it here on the heel, then what that creates is a moment of torque, which then raises the muzzle and makes the gun, uh, the muzzle rise. So, uh, and that of course, because grip is the master, but sight set the pace, is that when the muzzle rises, it's harder to shoot quickly with accuracy. Whereas if the gun tracks straight back and straight forward, then we would uh, you know, have the ability to see the target stays on target better, you can shoot faster with more accuracy. So from a physics perspective, totally get it. If I, if I support here, that's how we would do that. And what I see people doing that all the time is they bring that rifle in tight here, okay? We're gonna talk about the anatomy in a moment. But here's the other part of that. I have, in a traditional rifle stance, I have four points of contact with the gun. My first point of contact with the gun is with my firing hand, all right? So I have this hand on the gun. Again, the gun pushes back. I have force that's created here that is going to push the rifle up. I'm gonna create a moment of angle with this grip. So generally, people don't give a lot of support with the firing hand. My second one, of course, here is my support hand. The neat part of the support hand is it is at the height 
of your recoil. So if I get the recoil that's a, a, a being applied here and pushing that way, and I have a hold here, then I am on the same plane. I'm not creating any torque when I resist recoil or control recoil with this front hand. The other places I have, I have a cheek weld. So I'm not gonna do a ton here. I guess if you really mush your cheek and they're really freaking hard, then you get some friction here. But I think only when you're young, because us old people, the skin here has enough flexibility that it's just gonna move. You don't get a lot of recoil control there. And then of course, the last one is the gun connecting with your, uh, with your shoulder. And so again, uh, I think that this stems from military training and I think it stems from old school military training that we take a lot of recoil off the butt pad. And I think that comes from the M1 Garand, quite frankly. I mean, M1 Garand thought, shot 30-06. 30-06 go boom, boom. And because of that, then you have this big push. Uh, then we went to the M14. M14 shooting 762 or 308 Winchester, close. Let's not argue about it. Uh, and uh, again, big, big boom, boom. And so they think, well, I really want to get behind this. But that, of course, the M16, now the AR15 came first. M16 was patterned off that when it was made select fire. Uh, and then uh, again, a poodle shooter, right? A very low recoiling cartridge. So those are significant issues. So in true Inigo Montoya fashion, it's, uh, let me explain. Oh no, uh, let me, it's too much. Let me sum up. Okay, uh, from a pure physics perspective, the way to run this rifle is if I could support it here, I would do so. But again, the other way to do that is to take recoil on the front here with my support hand because it's on the same plane and it does the same thing. Rather than push here against it, I pull here against it and that does the same thing. So I'm taking recoil from the place where it creates no uh, uh, torque whatsoever. That's a good thing. So now I've invited everybody back on camera because we have more than physics to talk about of the rifle moving. We also have to talk about the human body. And Neil, you and I have been doing a ton of work with this with our pistol shooting. Oh, for sure. It's all about the anatomy and what you can do and, and the different muscles in the bone structure. So sure. I, I'm going to tell you, we definitely kind of, I think the beginning of this path for me was really thinking about anatomy was probably Scott Jedlinski and him really saying, mm -hmm. hey, John, you got to think about your martial arts. But then also jujitsu training really makes me think about things. And it really makes me think about um, where my head position is. So what we see a lot of handgun shooters do, we see it in rifles too, is yep. we see a couple things. We see them that with the handgun or with the rifle. And what they do is they get their head down like this, first of all. And I had, uh, it really came to head at the national conference when I had one of our ASP certified instructors, incredible instructor, uh, talking to me about pushing that gun out, keeping your eyeballs in the center, but then pushing forward with your neck. And that, you know, he said, is really where the shooter gets the best results. And so I said, really, that's kind of interesting. And uh, when we showed him the, the anatomy behind it and the anatomical strength, he was like, oh my gosh, learning has occurred. I showed this to my friend Zeb the other day. So uh, I'm gonna have him come up here. All right, so Zeb, natural shooting position, finger gun out. So again, Zeb is, uh, again, with his strong side foot back. So he is doing a, a, a standard athletic stance. He has got his gun up and on him. So now we're gonna push our neck forward like we normally would or, or kind of tilt your eyes so you're looking through the top of your eyeballs. Of course, he doesn't like this because he wears glasses, right? It sucks when you do that. Now, all I'm gonna do here is, Zeb, I'm gonna give you enough push and we're gonna see how much strength do you have here, okay? That's all we're gonna see. Now, Zeb's pretty, uh, you know, a, an average sized dude or a little bit more. So I give him a push and that's how much he's got. That's pretty good strength. That's a lot of strength. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing He's gonna get in his stance. And now I want you to just pick your head up to a, this natural position. I want you to look through the center of your eyes, again with your finger gun here. You might need to bring the gun up just a little bit higher so that you can see the sights. But now you're looking through the center of your eyeballs. Do you see how your head's tilted back a little bit, Zev? Just come straight up instead. So, so I'm just, put your hands down. Stand like a normal human. See how your chin is up? Mm -hmm. No, don't do that. Just stand with your head nice, there you go. Okay. Now, bring the gun up in there and now his hands are in that position and we're gonna do the same thing. <laughs> hey, how did how is your strength? Unbelievably different. All right, but maybe it's just because he is a big man. All right, Madam CEO, you want to try? Sure. So we're gonna feel that same thing. Now I'm gonna say this: a big guy like Zev, he can get down on the gun like this, and because he has so much backup mass, and so and because he has a margin for strength, he can probably get away with it, right? And we see that all the time, don't oh, we? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. But now we have not an average male. We have. Um, a far above average female, but <laughs> so let's try the same thing. Finger gun out. And we see this with the ladies all the time. Why do the ladies do this when they get their head forward and all that stuff? You know, I don't know why they would do it. 
I mean, I think that's the way they're taught. I, the I think that's because they learn from Spec Ops dudes and they watch, right. you know, a few videos and they do the thing. It definitely looks far cooler, you know, to get down and. Yeah. and it, I think instinctively it looks like it would be stronger. You know, you're down. You're pushing you're forward. Going, you're getting more mass behind. Yeah. So okay. I think it feels like that's the common sense belief that it would be stronger. All right. Well, let's get the hands out and let's see. Okay. So now you're going to dip your head. Got to get that. And again, you have that much strength. Okay. Yeah. Now again, probably plenty to be able to run a regular handgun, but let's pick those up again. Okay. Same thing. Head erect. And again, God dang it. I had far less strength than I expected. Um, I expected to have much more. Now, again, if I have somebody in my classes who's not a large human, and I go, okay, wait a minute, I'm having a hard time controlling recoil on this gun, which one would you prefer? Well, yeah, obviously. You have more margin here. Let's try a small human. <laughs> and a so, much cuter one. <laughs> all right, small human, come here. So um, this small human, not a lot of, uh, almost no handgun shooting whatsoever, but we're just doing a physics test here, yeah. right? Okay, so all you're gonna do is just stand kind of like this. Now, you're right-handed? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna take your right foot, step it back just a little, not a ton, but you're gonna keep your toes and your hips and your shoulders and your nose pointed towards the wall here, okay? So you're gonna put your hands out in front of you and you can just grip one in the other, great. So now what I want you to do is uh, standing straight up here, right? And now I want you to push that neck forward, and this is how much strength you have. So there it is, right? And you go, okay, wait a minute, but I'm small. All right, cool. Now I want you to do the same thing. Okay. So back foot, just back just a little, good. Finger gun up, great. Point it in, head nice and erect, and, and looking through the center of your eyes. Same thing. Okay, which one do you feel like you had more ability to resist? The second one. Okay, so the head up. Right? So wait a minute, that's a problem. Hold on, wait, wait, but you mean you had more too? Now, now again, this tiny human has less overall strength than the large human. Duh, we're not talking rocket science here, right? We're not saying that, that this makes a little bitty 100 pound human just like this dead sexy 205 pound human. Uh, see, see how much I love you? Uh, but it definitely increases the strength. Let's think about this from a rifle position as well. Mr. Neal, can I borrow you? Mm -hmm. All right, so same thing here. I'm actually gonna turn you around because in, in that rifle, people, what people tend to do on the rifle is they kick that back foot a little bit and they do turn a little bit because they want that front hand to come out. Mm -hmm. We're gonna fight that a little bit and turn our, our hips and shoulders in. But, uh, okay, fine. So now all we really do, all we really usually wanna do is when our hands are up like this, all we're gonna do is just bring this hand back here to take this recoil here. Right? But what I'm going to do here, and I'm using Neil because he trusts me with this stuff, is, is as he comes back, we're going to do that same thing where we've got our hands separated. We bring our head and our chest down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see, okay, so wait a minute. If my recoil impulse is here because I'm, I'm really putting that heel of that stock in, what's the difference? Okay, so go ahead and, and finger guns up. So here we are. We're this way. Let's tuck that elbow down because we're going to get that technique down pat and all those things. Now, again, here is where my recoil impulse is coming in on my rifle. Okay. okay, so neck forward because I'm down on my rifle. I'm ready to kill a deer in a deer stand or something weird like that. He's a hunter. This birds. Guy. It's birds. All about okay, birds. so he's going to kill birds with his shotgun. Now we're saying, how much recoil can we oh, do? Oh, none. Okay, now wow. back up. Now, again, it's an AR-15. It doesn't have a ton of recoil. Right. Okay, so okay. same thing. Here we are. And we're going to bring that down. <laughs> so now we're going to do that same thing. Ah! Okay. Okay, how much strength? Do you, come on back in. How much strength you got? Way more. I wonder if like, that's just because you, because I've primed you. Nick, we have never shot together before. <laughs> We've never, so, so uh, Facebook friends, but never shot together before. Correct. All right, so let's try the same thing. Hands up and out. I'm gonna head down first. Yeah, we're gonna do head down first. Uh, I'm gonna touch you on the, uh, in your clavicle, that okay? Go for it. Okay, so here we are right here. He's gonna feel that, and this is how much <laughs> strength you have. All right, cool. Now, I mean, it's a thing, right? I mean, your, your 223 doesn't push you that hard, no. but we're trying to see what anatomy does. So same thing here. Put that up and now head. Now, do you see you put your neck forward? I did. I don't want you to. I want you to just, I, that, yeah. I want you to stand up and bring the gun out in front of you. Okay? Same thing. <sighs> How much, is there a difference in your strength ability? Two or th it felt two or th like you could apply two to three times as much force. <sighs> so, again, a medium sized human here who probably has plenty of backup in order to uh, do it the other way and, and overcome the anatomical inefficiencies. Right. The bottom line is I strongly encourage you, get a partner, try this with the hand, the, the finger guns out like this, and again, head forward or head down versus head upright. And you will see how a ridiculous
ridiculous difference in your ability to resist that and how much structural strength your body has. This is definitely something I learned from Scott Jedlinski. The body works the way the body works. And we can fight the way the body works or we can use the way the body works. So this technique that we talked about, yes, from the perspective of what the rifle does, the physics, I want to support it along the axis of the, the force. But can we do that and get the maximum anatomical success and see what we go? Now it's time to get the rifles out. So we were talking about this a little bit off camera, but I wanted to show you guys too that, that this is, I mean, we learned this in jujitsu, right? So this is grappling 101. Neil has had a few jujitsu lessons, so he's basically a black belt. Yeah, right? I'd probably kill you all yeah, just okay. by looking so, at you. Yeah. And again, uh, so I've, I'm a, a 14 and a half year martial artist, but only about a year and a half in jujitsu. So I'm not, I'm not teaching a jujitsu lesson here, okay? I'm not qualified to teach a jujitsu lesson. I'm telling you where anatomy comes from. So if I'm wrapped up with somebody, say we're, we're in a grappling fight or whatever, right? So I'm gonna go bicep tie here. If I wanna push this large human around and I could break his posture so his head is down, now I can push him. Okay, fine. Okay. Now he's big, right? He's bigger than I am. Well done, Fat Shack. <laughs> <laughs> but now, if instead he keeps that head up and I go, I can't push him for nothing with everything I have. You were pushing away harder the second time too. Now, but, but so you wait were. a minute, what changed? Just my anatomy. His well, posture. My head was up. This is the way the body works. All right. I don't want to bore you to death and I don't want to try to make you watch no 25 minute video. So here's what we got. Now you've got the anatomy, you've got the physics. Next video, we're going to shoot the gun and put it on objective data.